The FBI has released some new data today that shows violent crime in the U.S. is rising. The United States had its biggest spike in murders ever recorded last year. That's according to a new report out from the FBI. And so were motor vehicle thefts. That's according to some new information from the FBI. Shootings in crowded places, rising car thefts, and rampant violence in America's corners a startling reality. This isn't just another crime story, it's a harsh reflection of reality. According to the Federal Bureau of Investigation, some U.S. states experience crime rates six times higher than others. Does this reveal cracks in the system? Or is it merely a statistical anomaly? How safe is America, really? And can anything be done to change this trajectory? Let's explore the 10 U.S. states with the highest crime rates. Starting with number 10, we have Oregon. Oregon reports a staggering crime rate of 5,610 incidents per 100,000 residents. Property crimes such as theft and burglary dominate the statistics, with Portland at the epicenter of these criminal activities. The city has seen a dramatic rise in gun violence, with non-fatal shootings increasing by a jaw-dropping 211% since 2019. Overall shooting incidents in Portland have tripled within the same time frame. Compounding the crisis is the pervasive problem of drug abuse, particularly methamphetamine, which has fueled further instability. Economic disparities between urban centers like Portland and rural communities exacerbate social challenges creating fertile ground for crime to thrive. The economic toll is equally devastating. Local businesses suffer significant losses, while potential investors shy away, fearing instability. On a social level, public fear intensifies, leaving vulnerable communities disillusioned with law enforcement. To address these challenges, Oregon's government is implementing multifaceted solutions. Efforts include expanding drug rehabilitation programs, increasing police patrols in high-risk areas, and providing support to communities most affected by crime. Moving up to number nine, Tennessee, with a crime rate of 5,658 incidents per 100,000 residents, Tennessee earns its place among the states with the highest crime levels. The city of Memphis stands out as the primary hotspot, grappling with rising property crimes and vehicle thefts. The roots of Tennessee's crime wave, particularly in Memphis, lie in a complex web of economic and social factors. Memphis, home to over 600,000 people, struggles with high unemployment, leaving more than 30,000 residents jobless. This lack of economic opportunity fuels property crimes and violent offenses. Tennessee's violent crime rate is 1.6 times the national average, with Memphis accounting for a significant share. While homicides make up just 1.5% of these violent crimes, aggravated assaults constitute over 60%. Despite these daunting figures, Tennessee is showing a strong commitment to tackling crime. High-profile initiatives, such as the creation of the Scorpion Task Force, demonstrate the state's resolve to curb criminal activity and restore safety to its communities. At number eight, we head to Washington State, ranked as the state with the second highest violent crime rate in the United States, standing at 5,759 incidents per 100,000 residents. This troubling figure stems from a mix of shifting policies and structural challenges. The state holds the unenviable title of having the second highest rate of aggravated theft per capita, while also leading the nation in retail theft incidents. Car thefts have surged alarmingly, placing Washington third worst nationally. A controversial law passed in 2021 revised police pursuit protocols restricting officers' authority to chase suspects. 
Critics argue this has inadvertently emboldened criminals, creating loopholes for offenders to exploit. In the retail sector, rampant theft highlights weak enforcement mechanisms and increasing economic pressures, which collectively drive property crimes. These overlapping issues make Washington particularly vulnerable to various forms of criminal activity, posing challenges to both public safety and economic stability. Now at number seven, Oklahoma reports a violent crime rate of 5,870 incidents per 100,000 residents, with the state's capital, Oklahoma City, as the epicenter of criminal activity. The state faces significant challenges from domestic violence and drug abuse, issues that are particularly acute in rural areas. Underlying drivers of crime in Oklahoma include poverty, limited access to social support, the widespread availability of firearms, and ongoing crises in addiction and mental health. Reforms in the state's justice system, such as State Questions 780 and 781, have successfully reduced incarceration rates. However, disparities in law enforcement practices, especially toward minority communities, remain a major obstacle. On a social level, family conflicts and domestic violence create widespread tension. Alarmingly, 40% of murders in 2022 were tied to family disputes, reflecting deep societal struggles that extend beyond surface-level crime statistics. Coming in at number six, Arkansas has a violent crime rate of 5,899 incidents per 100,000 residents, with the cities of Pine Bluff and Little Rock serving as the most troubled regions. Gun violence and violent crime in metropolitan areas are among the state's most pressing concerns. Contributing factors include limited access to quality education and health care, which exacerbates cycles of poverty and social instability. These systemic issues create an environment where crime thrives, particularly in economically disadvantaged communities. Next, at number five, South Carolina's violent crime rate is 5,973 incidents per 100,000 residents with property crimes, especially motor vehicle theft, being alarmingly common. The cities of Charleston and Columbia consistently report the highest crime rates in the state. While property crimes dominate, South Carolina also grapples with violence that disproportionately impacts urban areas, underpinned by economic inequality and strained community resources. Moving on to number four, Colorado with a violent crime rate of 6,091 incidents per 100,000 residents. Colorado faces a growing crime crisis centered around its largest city, Denver. The state's escalating crime problem is closely tied to income inequality, particularly in urban areas. Incidents of robbery, motor vehicle theft, and violent assaults have seen significant increases in recent years. Breaking into the top three, Louisiana registers a violent crime rate of 6,408 incidents per 100,000 residents, with the cities of New Orleans and Baton Rouge serving as major hubs of criminal activity. Extreme poverty and a lack of economic opportunities are at the heart of the problem. These issues disrupt social stability, discouraging investment in the region, and perpetuating cycles of disadvantage. The resulting environment creates fertile ground for violence and crime to flourish, making Louisiana one of the most dangerous states in the country. At number two, New Mexico. Despite having a relatively small population, New Mexico reports a staggering violent crime rate of 6,462 incidents per 100,000 residents. The city of Albuquerque stands as the state's crime epicenter, with robbery and assault cases making up a significant portion of incidents. 
New Mexico's struggles stem from deep economic inequality, crumbling infrastructure, and underfunded schools, which combine to create an environment that fosters criminal behavior. A controversial criminal justice reform enacted in 2016, often criticized for weak enforcement policies, has also been linked to worsening crime conditions. The state ranks third in the nation for property crime rates, with motor vehicle theft and petty theft being particularly widespread. New Mexico also grapples with one of the highest rates of police-involved killings in the country, with 15 deaths per million residents reported last year, according to MappingPoliceViolence.org. Racial disparities in policing exacerbate the issue, as black residents, who make up just 2.7% of the population, are four times more likely to be killed by police than white residents. Critics argue that the state's strong gun culture, combined with insufficient police training, compounds the problem. Calls for reform include implementing de-escalation techniques, stricter standards for use of force, and better oversight of law enforcement agencies. While there have been efforts to pass legislation addressing these concerns, key reforms remain stalled, intensifying the urgency for meaningful change. Finally, at number one, we reach the District of Columbia. As the capital of the United States, Washington, D.C. is not only the center of governance, but also the epicenter of crime-related challenges. With a violent crime rate of 7,986 incidents per 100,000 residents, D.C. holds one of the worst crime records in the country. In 2023, the city experienced a surge in homicides, reaching 274 cases, the highest number in two decades. This rise has been driven by armed robberies and motor vehicle thefts, crimes often involving teenagers. Deep social inequality in D.C., including stark disparities in access to education, employment, and health care, lies at the heart of the problem. The eastern part of D.C., predominantly inhabited by specific racial groups, frequently becomes a hotspot for criminal activities, particularly homicides. This issue is exacerbated by growing tensions from gentrification, which has displaced many low-income families to nearby suburbs, altering crime patterns. D.C. also carries a long history as a hub for drug trafficking during the 1980s and 1990s. At its peak in 1991, the city recorded 482 homicides, earning it the notorious label of the murder capital. Although crime rates dropped significantly in the 2000s, the recent surge in 2023 with 274 homicides marks the highest level in 20 years. Contributing factors include gang activity, easy access to firearms, and the growing involvement of teenagers in crimes like motor vehicle theft, which increased by 4%. Efforts to address this spike in crime include stricter surveillance, increased police patrols, and harsher penalties. However, the unique governance structure of D.C. poses challenges. Its status as a federal district limits residents' ability to elect a district attorney, complicating the judicial system. Additionally, the coordination between federal and local agencies remains a significant obstacle. The economic and social impact of crime continues to dominate both local and national narratives, from disrupting business activity to increasing public fear. Crime trends in the United States reveal a complex picture, with increases in certain areas driven by socioeconomic inequalities, societal disruptions from the pandemic, and a rise in gun violence. Income disparity and limited access to social services in urban areas are key drivers of crime. In remote regions like Alaska, restricted access to essential services further exacerbates criminal activity. Firearms play a significant role in violent crime, with 75% of homicides involving guns. High crime areas typically feature dense populations, extreme social inequality, or the presence of organized criminal networks. 
The social and psychological impact of high crime rates includes increased fear, stress, and declining trust in the legal system. These effects weaken social bonds and diminish overall quality of life. Tackling crime in America requires a balanced strategy that addresses both immediate enforcement and systemic issues. Investing in education and economic opportunities can break cycles of poverty and crime. Expanding mental health services is critical for prevention and rehabilitation, while evidence-based judicial reforms can reduce inequalities in the justice system. Strengthening community engagement builds trust between law enforcement and residents, fostering safer, more united neighborhoods. Together, these actions create the foundation for long-term change and resilience.